Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Glory. Well, praise the Lord. How's everyone doing today? Glory to God. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Hope all is well. It is getting that time of the year. Amen. You know, personally, I, I think every day should be recognized as this time of the year. But, you know, everybody's not like me. But that's all right. God never created us to be all to be the same. We all created uniquely fashioned the way he created us. Amen. Let's pray. And I want to talk to you just for a minute. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done and what you're doing even now, Lord God, in our hearts, our lives, our families, our relationships, and all that we have, Father. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch every heart today under the sound of my voice. And I ask you, Father, to anoint my tongue to speak as of a pen of a ready writer, to write your word upon the heart and upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, I yield to you right now, spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and emotions. And I ask you, Father, to have your way. Have your way today in this place. I thank you and I bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us today. I believe that we are in the right place at the right time. You know what? I, I've, I've been, I was out today in, in, a, in a class and there was, I noticed there's still a lot of people that are sick. And by the way, this is, this is Thursday, and I hope that you guys remember to pray today. All you prayer warriors, you know we do it every Thursday and Friday. And so tomorrow, we're going to be praying again at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. So I want to encourage you prayer warriors that you will all continue in the prayer and uh, on like we like we always do, nine in the morning, twelve noon, three in the evening. We want you to be to be take a part in this, and we want you to be, uh, oh my God, in tune with the Holy Spirit. Be a yielded vessel, be a yielded vessel, because right now we need to hear from heaven. We're getting ready to go into a brand new year, Amen. And this is not a time where we should just sit back and relax, but this is a time that I believe that we should uh, remember, reflect upon this year, 2017, and ask God, what is it that he has prepared for us to walk in in 2018? Amen? Because 2018 is going to bring about a few changes. It's going to bring about a few changes, and, and God wants to speak to our hearts to prepare us for those changes. And so we want to encourage you to begin to seek the face of God along that line because you see, we are in the last days and things are, are, are I mean, they're moving rapidly, are pretty fast. And so we want to know the mind of God concerning these areas, amen? And also, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, we, we had a, a wonderful time today in prayer, myself, Amen. I'm, I'm, I, that, was a, that was a time when I was so busy, I had to come at a later time and do it. But you know what? I didn't allow my activities to stop me from praying. And I know that I'm, I'm a busy man. But nevertheless, I still have to pray. And just like you, you still have to pray too. Amen. We all still have to pray. <laughs> all right. All right. 
And so we want to just thank God for all of you that, that love us and all of you that are working with us and that are praying with us. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. And I want you all to know that I love you all too. And God is with us. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? Amen. If God be for us, then who can be against us? And so I want to uh, just encourage you. I just want to encourage you to just be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand. Having done all to stand, stand with your lawn girt about with truth and put on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shone be with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take the shield of faith that you may be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. Then put on the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And with all man in prayer and supplication, go to the throne of grace boldly. Go to the throne of grace boldly that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Amen. If God be for you, who can be against you? Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Glory to God. I was at a, I just come out of a class uh, not too long ago, about, a, about 30 minutes ago, an hour ago. Amen. And there were so many people in that class coughing and, and, and sneezing and, and so forth and so on. And I'm thinking, Lord, there are still so many people are sick right now. As much as I teach on healing, amen, I'm still seeing people sick everywhere I go. You know why I'm still seeing people sick everywhere I go? Because they need to hear the gospel. Amen. They need to hear the truth. They need to hear the word of God that can make them free. They need something, they need something that's going to encourage them to believe. Amen. Glory to God. Pakistan is on the line. Pastor MJ, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. Amen. Well, God is looking for some people right now that will take that bold stand and will stand up and declare his word. Jesus, when he came into this earth, he came teaching, preaching, and healing. Teaching, preaching, and healing. Amen. And that ministry is still alive in the church today. But it's only alive if we will continue to carry out the Great Commission. Amen. Go ye. Amen. And teach and preach and heal. Glory to God. So I want to just encourage you to, to be everything that God created you to be. And don't let nothing... Don't let nothing stop you from being the person that God created you to be. And I know that there are, there are people out there that they're going to look at you and say, who do you think you are? Well, don't, don't worry about what they think. Amen. There are always going to be some critics. There, there was a lot of critics out there when Jesus was walking the earth. And the critics are still there. Just be the person that God created you to be and, and, uh, and do your best at what he called you to do. Do it, do it to your utmost best. Amen. And just go ahead and live your life. Because you can't please everybody, even though you might want to. You, it's impossible. You can't. But I want to talk to you a little bit about, because I, I know that there's some people right now, you're still sick. And, I, and, I, and I'm getting, I'm, getting a, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm reading your testimonies. I'm reading about your, I'm reading your prayer requests and, and so forth and so on. And I know that God wants to touch your life. He wants to cause you to, to rise up and be, the, and be the healed and not the sick. He wants you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. He wants you to be a lender and not a borrower. Amen. God wants to heal you in every area of your life. And how many of you know that God can? God can do anything but fail. Amen. So I want to turn your attention here to the word of God. As first of all, let's go to the book of Acts to the book of Acts, and let's go to chapter 10. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 10. And let's look at verse number 38. Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. Okay, are you ready? Let's read. How God anointed Jesus 
of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. For God was with him. Amen. God wants to do a mighty work in your life right now. Amen. What would be one of the most inspiring Christmas presents that you can receive this year, especially if you're one that's been diagnosed with cancer? If you're one that's, that have a chronic pain in your body every day and every night, and, and all of a sudden, the Lord delivers you from that pain. Amen. What would be one of the greatest breakthroughs that you could experience in your health? Amen. Especially if you're one of those people that uh, you've, you've had a stroke and, and, and your, your right side of your body is all numb. You can't feel it. And you got to pick your arm up in order to move it around. Amen. And if God could touch your life right now, if you would uh, have a heart to hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now, what would you ask him for? Would you ask him for some money or would you ask him for, for your healing? Money won't do you no good at that point. Well, you, money is always good, but that's not what you really need. What you really need is a touch from heaven. What you really need is a supernatural breakthrough. What you really need is divine health and healing operating in your life. God wants to bring you to a place of knowing. Amen. What I mean by knowing, knowing the will of God for your life. And it is the will of God for you to walk in divine health and healing. Amen. Whenever my family begin to, whenever my family gets sick, or when the enemy attack my family with symptoms and so forth and so on, I do a lot of preaching on healing. And you know what? That sickness or whatever that devil trying to do, it doesn't have a chance to stick around because you see, I begin to put the word of God on that demon that's trying to attach itself to my family. I said, no, my family is off limits. You cannot play your games here. We know the truth. And the Bible said, when you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. So we are walking in the freedom. We are walking in the liberty of the word of God. And so we should we all, we should all walk in the liberty of the word of God. We should all walk by faith and not by sight. Don't be moved because the doctor have given you a bad diagnosis. And I know the fear that gripped your heart the moment those words came out of his mouth. I know it just your heart just, just like it dropped down to the pit of your stomach. Amen. But nevertheless, those words, you don't have to make, you don't have to meditate upon those words. You don't have to uh, just uh, let those words run, run around in your mind 24 hours a day. What you should do is take authority over every word that's been spoken over your life that was not sent by God and cast down every vain imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Because with those words, when those words came, they came with the purpose to stop your faith from walking, to stop your faith from working, I mean, to stop your faith from, 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 from being activated. In other words, it want to make your faith nail and void. When those words come like that, it's not to help you, it's to stop you. So when those words begin to come, you begin to think of everything that God said about you and not what the doctor just said about you. Amen. Because Jesus, he bore your sicknesses and he carried your diseases and by his stripes, you were healed and you are healed according to the book of Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4. And five, amen. Verse number five said, ye are healed. Amen. So notice what he said in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 30 again. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. For God was with him. Amen. And so I know that some people right now, you might be thinking, well, Pastor, you don't understand. Uh, you, 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 you. You've been studying the word. You know, you, you have a little bit of knowledge of the word. But what about me? What about me? I don't know that much of the word. And my faith is not where it should be because I have not been applying myself. Well, when you go to the book of Luke chapter 17, book of Luke chapter 17, <clears throat> and look at verse number five. Luke chapter 17, verse number five, it said, And the, and the apostle said unto, unto the Lord, Increase our faith. You see, you may not think that you have enough faith, but I beg to differ with you. 
I believe that you have all the faith that you need to accomplish what you need to do. And all you need, what you, now what you don't, what, you, what you're lacking is developing your faith. You have the faith. If you're a born again child of God, you have the faith. But what you need to do is develop that faith. Amen. Develop that faith by meditating upon the word and just standing on the principles of God. Amen. God will not allow his word to fall to the ground without it accomplish the things that he sent it out to accomplish. Amen. When that word, when that word accomplished those things, then you will see a manifestation of the goodness of the Lord in your life right here, right now, today. God wants you to experience his goodness and his mercies because his mercies are renewed daily. Amen. His mercies are renewed daily. Glory to God. And so when I'm looking at this, when I'm looking at this, I can see that God sent his son Jesus to, to, to minister to the people, to heal the people, to set the, the oppressed free, amen, to deliver them from the bondage of depression, amen. God wants you delivered today, the same as he wanted the people delivered back then, amen. Now, now, now notice here, amen, so uh, notice here that in Luke chapter, let's look at Luke Again, chapter 17, look at verse number 11. Verse number 11 says, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that, a lep that, he, that he passed through uh, the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and he entered into a certain village. There met him ten men that were lepers. Notice what he said. There met him ten men that were lepers. Glory to God. Which stood afar off. Now notice they didn't approach him, but they stood afar off from him. They didn't approach him. Amen. But now look at verse, now look at the next, look at the verse number 13. Now I'm reading from, from Luke chapter 17 and now verse number 13. And they lift up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Amen. You see, they didn't come close to him. They stayed a distance from him, but their voice was able to reach him. Sometimes you just got to open up your mouth. Amen. God, he's not far away that he can't hear. But just like these lepers, sometimes you just got to open up your mouth and begin to declare, Oh, Lord God Almighty, Father, this is what I'm experiencing, but your word declared this, and I choose to stand on your word. And Father, I just thank you for manifesting your word on my behalf. I receive it now. Amen. Sometimes you just need to take a bold stand and, and, make a, and, and, and just stand on the promise of God's word and let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. Let God be true and every man alive. But notice what he said. They stood afar off. In other words, they didn't, they didn't come close. They didn't try to, they, they knew it was Jesus, but they didn't try to run up on him and say, man, I'm going to touch him. I'm going to. No, they didn't do that. They respected him. And so they stood afar off, but notice what they did. They didn't just stand back there. But verse 13 said, and they lifted up their voices. The 10 leopards, they lifted up their voices. Now notice, notice this is now this is very significant what I'm about to tell you here, because you see sometimes, sometimes you, you you get what you want, but then you turn away and don't and don't understand what all that you what all that done took place in your life. We need to not just, we oh my God, there's so many takers, and not enough people to be uh, not enough people that are thankful for what they are given. All they got, all they want, all they do, all they, all they're doing is walk up their hand out. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy, and I take all you give me. Amen. But no, this is not what God wants us to do. God wants to bless us. He wants to give us. Amen. But He also wants us to be thankful. Thankful. Look at verse number fourteen. Verse number fourteen says, "This is Luke chapter seventeen, verse fourteen. And when he saw, when he saw them, he said unto them." Go show yourselves unto the priests, and it shall come to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. Amen. Notice, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. And, and, and as they went, they were cleansed. Look at verse number 15. And one of them, when he saw, you see, 
when you hear what the when you hear what the Lord says, when you hear what, when you understand what God has said to you, oh my God, it's it, I mean it should it should turn it should cause uh, your your spirit to, to begin to do uh, 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 jump up and down and somersaults and all that kind of stuff. Amen. When you understand what the Lord is saying to you, that should cause you to turn around and reflect on the words that were spoken. My God, amen. Just cause you to turn around and reflect on that what was spoken. Look at verse number 14 again. And when he, when he saw them, he said unto them, he spoke to them. When he saw them, they, because they had cried out to him with a loud voice and he saw them. And then he told them what he tell them to do. He gave them instructions. He gave them instructions. Now notice the instruction that he gave them. He said, go, and he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. Go show yourself to the priest. That was the instruction. Now notice what? They didn't bother him anymore. They turned around and went on their way. What were they doing? They were going in obedience to what the Lord said, to show themselves to the priest, to show themselves to the priest. Now notice what, it says, notice what else it says right here in this verse. Very important. Very important. And it came to pass that as they went, notice, they walked in obedience to what he said. Go show yourself to the priest. And they went. In other words, they heard him. They obeyed him. They obeyed him. And they went. And as they, and the Bible said, and as they went, they were what? Cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Now look at verse number 15. Now this is going to, this is really going to bless your heart right here. Because you see, God is looking for people that will not only hear what he said, but honor what he said. And not only honor what he said, but give him glory once you see the manifestation of what he said. Don't just walk away like it was your doing. Don't allow yourself to think it was he, he had nothing to do with it. Amen. Because he had everything to do with it. He had everything to do with it. You never would have been healed if he hadn't died on that cross for your sin, for your sickness, for your diseases. Amen. Everything that we go through is because of him. Because of him. Look at verse number 15. Luke chapter 17, verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Remember? Remember? They, they, they approach him through a loud voice. Amen. They are, look at verse number, verse number 13 again. Verse number 13. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Amen. Now look at verse number 15. And one of them, which one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice. With a loud voice. Knows, knows what he did? He gave God glory for what has taken place in his body. Gave God glory. Verse number 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Amen. Yeah, he had no deal with the Jews, but when he received that healing, he, for, he said, forget about all that religious stuff. I'm going to go to this. I'm, I, got to, I got to thank this man. This man had just delivered me from a death sentence. He just gave me an opportunity to, ex, to, to, uh, ex, to uh, reflect on my life and to see the mistakes that I've made. And now he's given me an opportunity. He, he's still here. I'm, I'm going to thank this man. I'm going to give glory to God for what this man has done. Amen. What we see here, folks, is... People are not allowing themselves to be caught up just uh, in the moment of things, in the moment of time. But we saw this man, we see this man, a stranger, amen, don't even know the man, but he's a Samaritan, amen. But he turned back with a loud voice and he worshiped and he glorified God, amen. And, he, and the Bible said, and the Bible said in verse number 18, no, verse number 17, and Jesus answered, and said, where, was it, were, were there not 10 of you, but where is the nine? Were there not 10 of you, but where is the nine? See, 
you, you might be walking with a crowd, but you may not be a part of that crowd that you're walking with. But as long as you continue to walk with the crowd, you're going to be identified with that crowd until something is done. Notice what happened here. There was 10 of them. And they cried out. All of them cried out, Lord, have mercy on us. Master, be merciful to us. Amen. And then in verse number 13, verse number 15, one of them turned back with a loud voice. Only one out of the 10 turned back with a loud voice. Amen. He turned back with a loud voice, glorifying God for what was done in his, in his body. Now notice what else it says here. Notice what else it says. Verse number 16. And fell down at his feet. And fell down at his face. And fell down on his face. At his feet. And fell down on his face at his feet. What was he doing? Not only did he give God glory for what had took place in his body, but he humbled himself. Shiki palabasai. He humbled himself. Amen. Can you see that? He humbled himself. Amen. What do you see that? Look at verse number 16. Luke chapter 17, verse 16. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Verse number 17. And Jesus answered, said, Where were there not ten of you? Ten cleansed? But where is the nine? And there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Then none other turn around and give God glory for what was done, but one stranger. Amen. One stranger. And look what God told him because he humbled himself. He gave God the glory for what was doing, what, what, had, what had happened to him. And then he humbled himself. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost on this thing. He humbled himself in verse number 19 said, and he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith. You see, that was an act of faith. That was an act of faith. He said, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. So when you don't understand everything, just like those, those there was 10 of them. But you might be one of those people that like to run with a big crowd and, and you're needing something. And God, and God gave a word to the whole crowd because all of y'all had the same uh, uh, type of need represented in your life. And so now the Lord, he, he, he grants you your prayer request, not just to you, but to the whole group. Everyone was given an uh the assurance of their of their need being met. But only one of the ten had compassion enough in his heart to turn around and give the glory to God. But not only did he give the glory to God, <clears throat> he also worked, he also he also humbled himself and I'm I, and I'm telling you folks if he humbled himself, I can assure you, even though the scripture don't say it, but if he put his face to the ground, that's an act of worship. That's not only an act of humility, amen, but that's an act of worship. So I can, I, I believe that this man began to worship. See, in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19, it was recorded that the 10 leopards standing afar off from, from standing, standing afar off, Afar from, a, from the village, cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus told them to go show themselves. He told them to go show themselves to the priest. And as, and as they went, they were cleansed. How were they cleansed? They received instructions and they walked in obedience to the instructions. Amen. Only one turned back to give thanks to to give God glory. Falling on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks, Jesus cleansed that, Jesus, de Jesus declared that he was not only 
<coughs> cleansed. He, Jesus not only declared that he was cleansed, but was made whole. But was made whole. You know, that made that word made whole, that, that word made whole means what every, his whole flesh returned to normal. Returned to normal. Amen. Oh, glory to God. When you think that that would be enough to give God glory, to worship God, you've gone through all this pain, you've gone through all this sickness, and 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 all of a sudden, the Lord touched your body. And then all of a sudden, after he had touched your body, oh my God, somebody right now is getting a touch from heaven right now. You, uh, you, 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 you're, getting a, you're, getting a, you're getting a light of what I'm saying to you in the word of God. And, and, and God is touching you right now. Amen. Receive that touch right now. There's a warmth right now just coming over your body. Your body's starting to tingle. And there's a warmth and a tingle just coming over your body right now. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive that healing. Receive that healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Amen. But only one turned back and gave God glory. Falling on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks. Jesus declared that he was not only cleansed, but whole. Nine were cleansed of leopard, but only one was made whole. Notice what I said? There was nine cleansed. In other words, the disease left them, but their body was still in the same condition that it was. Only thing about it, the disease was gone. It was no more disease in his body. My God. But this one that turned back was not only cleansed, but the Bible said that he was made whole. The one who turned to give thanks to God was totally restored. Totally restored whole. Amen. Whole. You see how important it is when you believe in God for a miracle, when you believe in God for a healing, when you believe in God for a touch. And when God touch you, don't walk away full of pride thinking that, look what I did, look what I have, look what I'm doing. And, you know, God, you know, be careful how you boast unless your boasting is in the Lord. But when the Lord touch you, turn around, face him and say, Father, I thank you for touching me. I thank you for healing my body. I thank you for delivering me from that spirit of depression. I thank you for healing my eardrums. I thank you for, for healing my lungs. I thank you for healing my, that, my, my colon. I thank you for driving that cancer out of my liver. I thank you, Lord, for, for healing my heart. Whatever God has done, thank him for it and begin to give him glory for it. And you will begin to experience not only that you're cleansed, but God has made you whole. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't that some? Ain't that good news? Amen. Ain't that good news? Amen. Now I want to take you to another scripture here. It's a very familiar passage of scripture that we that we like that we all like to read. Amen. That we all like to read. And uh and it's found here in John chapter in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Amen. Now won't you look not in Mark chapter 5 look at verse number 22. Mark chapter 5 verse number 22 and it says and and behold there cometh one of the one of the rulers of the synagogue Jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet. Now see, now notice what Jairus did. The same thing that leper did. But Jairus came and did what? He fell at his feet. He fell at his feet. Now notice what it goes on and says. And besought him greatly saying, My little daughter lied at the point of death. I pray thee, come, lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and, that, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thought him. Amen. So he was not by himself. There was a lot of people around there when Jairus uh, approached him. Amen. When Jairus approached him, there was a lot of people around there. But notice 
what the scripture goes on to say, Jesus, he said, he went with him. He went with him. But on his way, notice what it said in verse number 25. Verse number 25 says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood, 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, but was nothing better, but rather grew worse. In other words, this woman, she was well, she, she, she had everything going for her. But she spent all of her living. She spent all of her wealth. Amen. She went to the finest doctors that she could find in that time, I believe. Amen. And she spent her inheritance, her wealth. She spent all that she had trying to get better or trying to get healed. But the Bible said, but she was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Verse number 26. She did not get any better, but she got worse. Amen. Verse number 26. And then verse number 27 said, when she, when she, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and, and touched his garment. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. Verse number 28. For she said, you see, it's time for you to start talking to yourself. It's time for you to start talking to your body. Hallelujah. It's time for you to put a name to whatever that sickness is and begin to speak to that sickness. It, it's time for you to start talking to that thing. Amen. This woman, notice what she said right here in verse number 28. Luke, is it Mark chapter 5, verse number 28. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. Who is she talking to? She was talking to herself. She was prophesying what she wanted or what she was going to receive from the Lord. She was prophesying. Amen. Verse number 29 says, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Amen. Notice she started talking to herself. I know if I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. What was she doing? She was built, she was establishing her faith. Amen. She 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 wrote, she made her, she made her her plans. She knew what she wanted. So she established a connection point and she went for it. And she went for it. Amen. She not only made the connection point, saw the connection point, but she saw a whole lot of, a whole crowd of people around him. Now, if it had been you and me, we'd have looked at all that crowd of people and we'd have said, well, you know what? I'm going to wait and he might come back through another day, but you know what? It's just too, it's, I, know, I don't see no way that I can make it right now. It's too many of them. Too many people. I don't think I can make it to Jesus right now. How many people have missed out on their healing because they looking at people rather than looking at Jesus? How many people have missed out on their promise because they are focusing on man rather than the son of man, the healer? Oh, thank you. But think about that. Just think about that. If you get your eyes off of the situation if you get your eyes off of the circumstances that surrounding the point of contact, because whenever you make a whenever you make up your mind that you're gonna do that you're gonna uh, uh, take that bold step of faith, whenever you make up your mind that you're gonna just just get up and do it, the enemy right there to talk you right out of it. So you gotta realize. That the enemy, the devil, does not want you to be healed. He does not want you to receive your miracle. He does not want you to experience a breakthrough in your life, in your health. He wants to keep you walking around talking down on yourself. How are you doing? Oh, I tell you, I, I'm just so bad. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it to, to the next day. I tell you, I'm in so much pain. You just can't imagine what kind of pain I'm going through. Don't, don't be talking like that. 
That's what the devil wants you to talk. Now, if you really want to, ex to, to blow his mind <laughs> and send him on a flight, you know, send him running, begin to quote the word. Amen. We begin to quote the word. Jesus bore my sickness. He carried my disease and by his stripes, I am healed. Amen. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them and delivered us from, from our destruction. How Jesus went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Amen. For God was with him. He laid hands on a few. Amen. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, sharing, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, you need to get the scripture coming out of your mouth. You got to start talking to yourself. Body, I know what the doctor said about you, but I tell you this, according to the word of God, that I've been delivered from diseases. I've been delivered from 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 uh from sickness and diseases. And so body, you line up with the word of God. I declare you are healed. I speak life and health and healing over you body in Jesus name. Pain, I command you to go. You're not sent by God. You you are an attack from from the enemy, from the devil, and I don't even though I even though I feel I know that you're there, I choose to receive what the word says about me. I choose to declare that I am healed of this sickness, I'm healed of this disease, I'm healed of this, I'm delivered from this pain. Because Jesus bore my pain, he bore my sickness on the on, on the tree. Amen. If you don't understand what I'm saying, just turn over to the book of, of Isaiah, chapter 53, amen, and you can see the scripture, and, and you can just personalize that scripture, put it in your own words, but stay, stay with the word, stay with the word. And let words of life come out over your body. Let words of, of life be expressed. It may be, be the expression of your heart. Not the sickness, not the disease, not the pain. Amen. Because you're magnifying those things. But if you allow the word to come forth, faith is going to begin to be established in your heart. And faith will manifest the desire of your heart. Amen. God will cause that sickness, that disease to leave your body. Just like that leopard man. There was 10 of them, but only one turned back to say, Lord, thank you so much. I give God glory for what you just did. I thank you. And just fall down and begin to worship him. Begin to give him glory. Begin to give him honor. Begin to give him praise. Then all of a sudden, the Lord is going to speak to you again. He said, was there not 10 of you? Then where are the nine? Amen. They were nowhere to be found. But only the stranger, the Bible said, the Bible even called him a stranger, turned around and worshiped the Lord and gave him and, and, and began to thank God for what was done in his body. And the Bible said, listen to me. The Bible said, be made whole. He not only was cleansed of the leopard, but God made him whole. The others were cleansed as they was going to show themselves to the priest, but only one recognized what had took place in his heart and turned around and worshiped God, give God glory, glorified God for what was done in his body. He was so excited about it, he, 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 he humbled himself and he fell down on the ground on his face at the feet of Jesus. And normally, friend, when you go down that far, that's in worship position. You begin to worship, thanking him, begin to, oh, begin to acknowledge his, his, his mercy for his mercies endured forever. Hallelujah. God wants to work a miracle in your life today. My time is about up right now. But I want you to realize, I want you to know that no matter what you're going through during this holiday season, you're not alone. If God be for you, then who can be against you? This sickness that has come upon your body, you that have been battling sickness all year long, I want to... I, I, want, I, I got a word for you. 
I got a word for you. Jesus bore your sicknesses. He carried your diseases. And by his stripes, you are healed. I'm going to say it again. This is a prophetic word for someone to have enough faith to believe it. Jesus bore your sickness in his own body on the tree. And by his stripes, you are healed. Not going to be healed. You are healed right now. Right now. All you have to do is just simply release your faith and receive it. And say, Father, that's me. I receive it. I receive my healing right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. No weapon formed against me prospers. Every tongue rises up against me in judgment and condemned. I cast down every vein of imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God because the knowledge of God declares that I'm healed. I choose to believe what God's word says. Glory to God. I choose to walk by faith, not by sight. I choose to declare that I'm the healed and not the sick. I'm the blessed, not the cursed. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a lender, not a borrower. I choose to believe that I'm the healed and I'm walking in my divine health today. Glory to God. Healing is mine because healing is the children's bread. Jesus, Jesus bore my sickness. He carried my diseases. Amen. Glory to God. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. I know that I'm healed. The word of God says that I'm healed. And I choose to, I choose to acknowledge that. Be like that man. Be like that stranger that turned back and worship him. Begin to thank him. Begin to give him glory. Amen. God bless you. I've enjoyed sharing with you today. Remember, 9 o'clock in the morning, we're going to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And at, tw and at 12 noon, we're going to be praying for the uh, body of Christ, the fivefold ministry gift, asking God for a spirit of unity. Amen. And for Jerusalem, we're asking God to keep their borders protected and safe. Amen. That the enemy will not be able to come in and mess with them. And pray for the prime minister and ask God to give him wisdom and knowledge to, to accomplish the task that he's given him. And, and also pray for... Pray that the, the 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 headquarters of the United States Embassy uh, be 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 established as it has been said in Jer in Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is the capital. So let's put the embassy back where it belongs. Amen. Let's put the embassy where it belongs. Amen. Then at at twelve noon we're gonna be praying for the body of Christ. Amen. And I want y'all, and then uh, we're going to pray for the body of Christ, praying for all our loved ones. Amen. And then at 3 p.m., we're going to be praying for the uh, United States. Amen. And we're going to be praying for the president, Donald J. Trump. People, uh, right now is a good time that you that you just do a little extra prayer for this man. That's, uh, he's under a lot of pressure right now. Amen. And God, and God is using him to carry out his assignment. But he still need prayer, folks. He still need prayer. So pray for the president, Donald J. Trump, and ask God to strengthen him. Ask God to give him divine wisdom and knowledge to carry out the assignment. And ask God to show him who to listen to that, will, that are able to speak a words of life, words of wisdom, words of encouragement, that he will not lose heart in what God is calling him to do. And, 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 and God just put this on my heart also. Pray for his health. Pray for his health. Amen. I don't know if anything wrong with his health, but it just came up in my spirit. So I'm just asking you to pray for his health. Amen. Pray for the president's health. Amen. And uh, and, and let God, if God show you something, then just, yeah, just ask God to strengthen him, to strengthen his body. Amen. And uh, may God bless each and every one of you. I'm going to be praying for you all tomorrow. Amen. And I want you all to be praying for me. And my family. I'm going to be praying for you and your family, especially all you intercessors. Then all, and I want you all to be praying for me and my family. And Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. And I pray that the, this Christmas will be one that you will never forget. It will be one that you will talk about from years to come. God bless you and may God bless America. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.